All right, the next chickens, they're going to pasture. Yeah, you got the heavy end, don't you? Okay. Oh, that's heavy. How do they poop so much in such a short ride? Yeah, every time. Make room for the others. Troughs. You guys don't have to. All I know they're all fighting over one. There's one smart one. Like there's yeah, there's one by itself. The rest are fighting over the one feed trough. So yesterday, Rebecca and I, we processed 23 meat chickens. It was yeah. a long day, wasn't it? It was very long, but it wasn't as bad as processing 19 turkeys. Chickens are a lot easier. Yeah, turkeys do not pluck very well at all. Like, you spend more time plucking on a turkey. Um, and there's these, a lot of manual labor lifting 30-pound turkeys. They're, they're, <laughs> yeah, we let them get too big. These chickens, they're so young, mm -hmm. like at seven, eight weeks, they pluck so much easier. They're, they're way easier to process. Mm -hmm. So when we processed the chickens, we also looked to see how we counted how many males and how many females we had. Yep, we only had eight males. And they're always the bigger ones. They, mm -hmm. they grow so much faster, they're a pound or two heavier. Yeah. And it's a straight run, you just kind of get a random mix of males and females, but this time we definitely got way more females. females. So probably our average weight over the whole batch is probably down this time. So the birds we processed yesterday are in the refrigerator cooling down. They're gonna rest for two or three days mm -hmm. before we freeze them. So we'll go ahead, we'll, we'll get them out and we'll show them to you. We'll maybe pull a couple weights too and see how much they ended up weighing. And you can yeah. obviously tell the males are gonna weigh the most. So this is set to refrigerator mode and all the ones from like over here, this direction, these are all of the females. And then these right here are all the males, but it, one full layer in here of chicken. All right, there you go. Eight pounds, 3.6 ounces. That's probably the biggest male. That's a big chicken. So that's probably one of the biggest girl chickens, right at uh, six pounds, six ounces almost. Mm -hmm. So two pounds difference. There is our smallest chicken. Four pounds, 14 ounces. Almost five pounds is our smallest. Yep. So we went ahead and just weighed all the chickens and got it over with. So total weight was 146 and a half pounds worth of chicken in the freezer. The average girl chicken was uh, 5.9 pounds and the average boy was seven and a quarter pounds. And we still got 22 more chickens left to process somewhere in about four weeks. And if we stay around that same average weight, we'll end up with about 285 pounds worth of chicken in the freezer. And that will be our year's supply. So we're trying to catch up on some things that need done around here. And one of them is to harvest these apples. So these are all gala apples. And we're gonna go ahead and pick as many as we can, get them washed up and see if we can store them away. I don't know how many we're gonna get, but we're shooting to fill up this cooler. <laughs> we'll see. Oh, that's a nice one. It's a good one. It's a bad one. Well, we ended up buying a apple picker the other day. We have never had one. Rebecca is honing her skills, trying to it's hard to get in there with them. You broke a branch. Well, I couldn't get in there. <laughs> How many apples compared to leaves are you gonna have? I don't know. Well, you're getting them. Yeah. 
All right, we didn't get a full cooler, but we've got probably half a cooler worth of gala apples just off of this one tree. We also collected the apples that have bad spots on them, and we'll give those to the pigs. We're gonna go ahead and put some, fill this up with water and uh, to clean them off, and I guess to wash out any bugs or if there's anything in them. These are like what people would call organic. They've never been sprayed or anything like that. I just want to go ahead and get them all clean, bug free, before we store them away in the fridge. All right, now that we just rinsed them off, we're gonna go ahead and put them in some milk crates and get them in the fridge. thing will fit in there. Still got one extra shelf, so we can get. We still have room for more apples. Look out, piggies! There you go. And the chickens will finish whatever you don't eat. I don't know if there'll be much left after the pigs get done. Yeah. Apples are definitely their favorite, aren't they? She don't mind eating after a pig. No. So it's the next day now. I spent several hours this morning cleaning up here in front of the workshop and I just got the hay mower backed up in front of the garage door. So now I can get a welder out here to it. I'm gonna try to attach these windrow deflectors that we made the other day, get them welded up underneath, and then we need to make it so that they can bolt in several different positions for different widths. But I'm gonna go ahead and see if we can get these mounted and then we can go test it out. First thing I need to do is just clean off where I'm gonna be welding. I ended up getting bigger self-tapping screws. The ones the other day were snapping off. These are should be a little stronger. I'm still gonna weld it as well. Just looking at the gap right there as we swing it. The gap maybe gains eighth of an inch or so. I'd say we got it about the right angle. That'll work. Once again, looking at this gap as we swing. Oh, it's rubbing a little bit. But, but it still moves the full way, so I think I think that'll work. So the only thing left to do now is to drill some holes for the different positions that you can 
bolt these deflectors in. I'm thinking five different positions on each side with the very last position being like 48 inches wide, which is the width of the baler. So we'll probably start out here on the outside and, then, and put one there for maximum width and then we'll just put a hole about every six inches as it swings inward. All right, I got the deflectors bolted in, ended up with four positions on each side, and the smallest it can be right now is 46 inches between them at the top. It does get a little bit smaller at the bottom, so we'll go hook this up to the tractor, go cut some grass, and we'll see what size window it actually makes. So down here is where I've been cleaning this next fence row out, and you can see behind me hopefully you can see we have got weeds and grass and just a much, bunch of random stuff that's over my head even and I think that this will work perfectly to be able to test this out we're gonna we'll just run through here make a big swath and we'll see how wide the windrow is So the Heston did cut those tall weeds. You can see there's a bunch here on the back. There's another uh, piece of metal that's missing right here. There's supposed to be one that helped kind of cover this opening, you know, and it's missing. It's several pieces of sheet metal are missing on this thing. We have some grass caught under here and it seems to be like on top of the deflector that we made. Um, I know a lot of people were worried about grass getting caught in these slits. There's one piece right there. A little bit of grass on top of that deflector too. So that may be a slight design flaw there. Looks like you're gonna have more trouble with grass getting over the top of it and sitting on top of it than we will have it getting in the slits that we cut to bend it. But let's go ahead and see the windrow and see how wide it is. Hopefully you guys can tell where the windrow is. So the pickup on the baler's 48 inches wide. It does have some gathering wheels on the side. This windrow is probably closer to 54 inches wide. So it's still wider than what our, what our deflectors were. We might be able to tighten that up a little bit, but that baler has gathering wheels that help funnel it in. So those, those gathering wheels may pull this into the baler just fine. So I think we'll go ahead, we'll move the deflectors in a couple more inches and drill two new holes and we'll try it again. So if I drill it right here, we'll have a 37 inch width. All right, let's try this out, see how it does. My windrow is right at 48 inches wide, right what we're shooting for. So that's perfect. So once again, we got grass on top, and I saw this happening. You can see they're all going this direction, right? So as it was coming through this roller, it was hitting this deflector, and that deflector was shooting them up and on top of here while it was cutting. So that's the original deflector for when I bought it. It's obviously been modified a little bit. And the one on the other side, this is one I made out of just some old roofing material. And it's bent down at the top. It goes all the way over here to this bar. And it's not having the same problem. So I may have to do a modification on that one. Do something similar. Make it longer. Make it, you know, bend down a little bit so it doesn't end up on top like this. As I look under the back, you can see there's a little bit of grass hanging on top of that one. And then there's some grass hanging on that one. So that's 
definitely a design flaw right there that it's gonna catch grass on top of the deflectors but overall I mean we'll just have to run it and see how it does but I'm happy that's making the right windrow size so it looks like all I need now is some decent weather I need I probably just need like two days of decent weather so I can cut it and then try to bail it into silage the next day I do have a hose here that is leaking um, one of these hydraulic hoses this one right here is leaking and you can see I've got hydraulic fluid out dripping on the ground so I'm gonna have to see if I can go get a new hose and get that fixed as well so I just looked at the weather and it looks like we don't have any rain for the next four days so tomorrow I'll try to come out here I think I'll pull up this these electric wires pull out these fence posts and we'll close off this pasture and then hopefully in the afternoon I can come out here and I'll try to cut this sorghum Sudan grass and I'll prop since we're, this is our first time we're gonna try to make it into silage bales so this is our first time trying this I'll probably only cut like two or three strips here and then the next day I'll, I'll wait till I think it's around 50% moisture and then we'll come back through we'll bail it up and wrap it the same day and we'll just see how the whole process goes. These are gonna be really heavy bales. They're gonna weigh three times as much as normal because of, instead of being 16% moisture, they're gonna be 50% moisture. I mean, they're gonna weigh a lot more. So it's gonna be hard on the equipment doing all this. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if something broke <laughs> while we did it, as it just wouldn't surprise me. So we'll just have to wait and see how this goes. And if it goes well, we've got quite a bit more we can do we'll just have to wait and see but anyway i think that's all, all i'm going to do in this video it's probably a little shorter video than normal but i think this is a good stopping point and uh, we'll carry on trying to make our first silage bales tomorrow so i hope you guys have a great day and i'll see you in the next one